So a lot of you guys are super familiar with Weave Maps, I'm sure. It's uh, founded in, in late 2000s, I believe 08, allows individuals to look up uh, dispensaries, find locations, uh, cannabis dispensaries, and then also uh, they even have online delivery services. I mean, that business is just totally, totally blew up. And so what I want to do is I want to show you guys uh, how you can go about identifying and finding their trademarks. And then I want to do a teardown. I want to go into it and show you guys what tr active trademarks that they presently have. So hopefully you guys find this super useful. Um, again, the, the purpose of these, of these shows is to give you guys start to finish content so that you guys not only will learn something as you watch, but you will also have tools so that you can apply these in your daily lives to research your competitors, to research other market spaces that you guys might possibly want to go into. And also just to give you guys creative ideas for how you guys can go about protecting your own trademarks. So you can learn a lot by seeing how uh, others are uh, filing and protecting their brands. One of the beauties of the trademark system is that all applications are public right, right when you file. It's all out there. You can learn a whole lot. So let's just get started. So what I want to do is first things first, we got to figure out who would own the Weed Maps mark. So the way you can do that is you can go to weedmaps.com. So let's toggle over there and then hop over there. And then first things first, I want to figure out what the legal entity is that holds their marks and possibly their um, their other IP. So if you click on, for example, legal and you look at their terms of use, you can see right here, uh, these terms are a legally binding contract between Ghost Management Group LLC. So this is most likely, this is probably also the company that holds their intellectual property, like their trademarks and their goodwill and their brands. So let's test that theory. We're going to toggle back. We're going to go to tsdr.uspto.gov. We're going to click on search trademarks. And again, you remember, you can apply what I'm showing you here. You can apply to any other company that you guys might be interested in researching. And then you're going to click on basic word mark search. And then you're just going to put in their name here. And then you're going to click owner name. Now, one thing I do is I'd suggest you probably use quotes. Um, that would probably knock out a lot of uh, others that might also have similar hits, like if they have the word ghost in them. So. Once you do that and click, let's just look at the live marks, by the way. Go ahead and click submit query. So we get 17 hits, okay? 17 hits, live marks. Um, let's just take a look. Let's let's hop in here. Kind of curious as to how many are dead. Let's just take a quick look. So if we look at dead marks too, 17 live and six dead. Interesting. Marijuana cup, weed maps grown in Oregon, weed cup, weed maps cup, ghost group, and MMJ menu. Okay, interesting. Maybe if we have time at the end, we can go back and look at these. But let's just dive in. I'll take a look at some of their live marks. Start from the very bottom. So again, this is a registered mark. This is looks like their core their core name, Weed Maps. And as you can see, again, originally registered by Weed Maps Media uh, in Newport Beach. And obviously later, once it became Ghost Group, Ghost Group Management Group, LLC, they probably assigned their rights to the new entity. But let's, uh, let's dive in. So let's see. So they filed under Class 35. So again, promoting the goods and services of others. And again, the goods and services are, of course, related to... Uh, interestingly, herbal products, right? So notice when they applied. So this was back in 2008. And the first use in commerce was also in 2008. Now, remember, back in 2008, you wouldn't have used the word cannabis in the description of goods, because that would have been a red flag, right? Because trademark law fundamentally requires use in commerce. And so it's federally not lawful. And so this is a really, really good example, because you what we're learning, what we're seeing here is how a company that provides these sorts of services can pursue federal trademark protection, even though the content, the subject of what they are advertising might have complications under federal law. So again, you'll note, no mention anywhere here of cannabis, but we're talking about herbal products. And again, 35, this, this usually covers business B2B services. And then also 38. Now, 38, this is, so online forums, um, a lot of people, a lot of you guys are going to file under 38 if you guys have like live streams because live streams is covered under 38. So let's let's go back. Let's take a look again. Filing 2011. Interesting that they started earlier, right? So they started using it in 08, uh, but they didn't file uh, until almost three years later. So just remember, guys, always better file early, file early. You want the earlier filing date. Let's go back. Let's take a look at some of the others. So this is probably going to also be a similar mark, but covering different classes. So we saw class 35 and class 38. This is going to be covering class 42. So this is generally this is SaaS service software as a service. So here is online community. So social media, a lot of social media companies also have marks under class 42 because they have a web-based product that's software as a service. Interestingly, here you do see, and you see medical cannabis, right? 
very, very important qualifier in medical cannabis. Actually, let's dive in. Let's see. Let's see if that was required. If that was required by the uh, examiner. Sometimes they will do that, where they actually require you to qualify or amend the description of goods. Now, it's interesting because in this one, they might have required. Uh, so here's an office action, right? So right away, you know, there's something up. So let's take a look. Let's dive in here. We got a merely descriptive refusal, supplemental register. But let's see if they initially went under cannabis. Uh, okay, so interesting. So when they actually filed, they didn't even mention, it looks like they didn't even mention cannabis. So the examiner actually suggested it, recommended it. It looks like, yeah, the examiner recommended it. So they went for it. Let's take a look at what other marks they have. Weed menu, okay. Oh, electronic catalog services featuring herbal products of others. So again, of others, this implies, this is your classic B2B, right? So they're helping other businesses. So class 35, they fit perfectly under 35. Weed maps, let's see, here's another one under, oh, okay, now here's their logo, right? And again, this was filed back in 14. And again, also 35, 38, and 42, and also nine. So once you have a mobile application that's actually downloaded onto your mobile phone, right? So like once it's an app that you can download onto this device, then you're looking at class nine because it's recorded and downloaded and stored on the device. So that puts you in class nine. Good tip for those of you guys who are develop software out there is you're most likely, and I've done prior episodes on this, but you're probably gonna end up in both class nine and class 42. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back and see what else we have here. So, okay, so just the letters W and M. Uh, okay, and here's, so the prior one was a word mark. This is a design now. So it's got the bottom arc right below the W and the M. And again, 935 and 38. Um, this one's filed in, in uh, 14. Now, more reading maps. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a shorter episode, guys, um, but that's okay. Um, I wanted to do a teardown. I wanted to show you guys how can businesses related to the cannabis space have gone about protecting their their marks. And this is a, a really great example. Again, this was filed back in 14. Again, promoting goods and, promoting goods and services of others, downloadable software, no surprise here. Again, same thing. So this is composite. It's called a composite mark because it has design elements and also word, words, so the letters W and M, and then there's also this arc at the bottom. Yeah, let's take a look. So there's more weed maps. Looks like there's three other weed maps, class nine. Okay, so this is going to cover downloadable. So downloadable, and it's also covering medical cannabis and herbal products. And interestingly, again, again, notice the word medical cannabis, important qualifier, I'm sure. This looks like probably going to be similar. Okay, 25. Now we're getting into clothing and apparel. So now this is swag. So now they're... Now they're hustling swag, and so now they're going to expand out into class 25. And now they also have retail stores. So, and again, 2017, right? So that's the first use in commerce, right? Trademark, really, really interesting way to learn about the history of a company. Um, it catalogs it, how they're, when, when their services first came out, how they grew over time, how they expanded out over time. We especially saw that yesterday with Snap. I mean, just going into all the different classes that the, the later marks they filed under. I mean, it's, it's very, very fascinating. So they have a lot, a lot of these marks on the WM. And again, they're just expanding out. This is just brand expansion. What you guys are seeing unfold before your eyes is just a, the brand expanding out into clothing and apparel, and then also brick and mortar retail store services. So, and again, we map, let's see what this is covering. This looks like it's, yeah, again, promoting goods and services of others, um, audio and visual promotional materials. Oh, and music events. Okay. Promoting sports and music events. Kind of interesting. I, I don't know that I necessarily knew that I associated them with, with musical events. Um, maybe some of you in the comments uh, will tell me that I should know about that. Let's see. Okay. Ah, okay. So again, very, very interesting way to learn about a brand. So Weed Maps, Herbal Legends. Ah, okay. So it looks like they're also promoting um, musical events. Again, if you guys want to see what specimens they filed, all you have to do is go into the actual TSDR, which is the trademark database of pending applications. So again, this is going to be a shorter episode, but I, again, I really think it's really informative. I'm glad we're, we're showing you guys this. Uh, yeah, WM, they're expanding out. So you're going to see it. So Weed Maps, WM, they're just going to expand out and file additional applications once they enter into new markets. Oh, okay. So here the market looks a little different. Um, and again, it's class 35 and 42. Ah, this one's pending, not yet issued. Wow. See, all these classes filing, filed on 2018. And interestingly, they filed under 1B. That means they intend to use the mark in commerce, but haven't yet started. Now, kind of interesting, as you guys can see, this is because this is related to their delivery services. You see that? Coordinating customer pickup, transportation, and delivery services. So this is possibly just more brand expansion. Delivery, regulatory compliance, order pickup, transport, and delivery. Expanding, expanding. You can see it. It's all cataloged here in their trademark applications. So WMMW. Okay, apparel, retail store, ser retail store services. Kind of interesting. Let's see how they use this one. Um, oh, they went under 1B, it looks like, actually. So we're not going to actually see that. Yeah, 1B. So they haven't yet started using it in commerce. 
and then Weed Maps Museum of Weed, also pending, also under 1B. So, so they have retail store services and apparel, so they're selling swag. Just for um, curiosity, let's just do a quick, quick Google search. Ah, here you go. LA uh, looks like, obviously I'm sure COVID's not helping that, but it looks like, I'm not actually sure if they're related. Uh, I'm assuming it is, but so maybe they're producing and selling um, clothing. Yeah. We have to research more and figure out their affiliation. But again, we actually saw this earlier, actually in some of our earlier content where we were looking at, uh, we, we were looking at Twitch and we saw the collab with Subway. Really, really a fascinating way to learn about uh, companies' growth trajectories and how they partner with other brands uh, to create and uh, expand their brands. So very cool. I'm glad you guys were able to hopefully gather really interesting um, and useful information out of this. And hopefully you guys can use these as tools when you guys are analyzing other market spaces that you guys might wanna go into or just research your competitors. So thank you so much for watching.